So the polyvagal theory has three primary stages. So you have your rest and digest, you have your fight or flight, and then you have your shutdown. Shutdown then consists of mobilization, immobilization, freeze and flop. What is going on, beautiful people of the world? We are back, Hurt to Healing, Tales of Triumph, episode three, uh, very exciting. Um, very happy. The sun is finally shining in the UK. It's brilliant. It's only probably like nine, 10 degrees, but it's absolutely beautiful. Any opportunity to get out in the sun, soak up that vitamin D, absolutely phenomenal. Now, today is a little bit more of a factual video in terms of physical health and actually the auto, you know, the different like, physical health and the nervous system inside the body itself because we are going to be talking about the polyvagal system and the polyvagal nerve, which is a physical thing inside of our body that can regulate a lot of what our mental health tells us. Now, again, quite boring. We're going to reference a few studies, but let's dive straight into it. And we obviously we will recap how you obviously regulating your nervous system, either through food or through exercise is what we will cover at the end of the video. So. Polyvagal theory is all to do with the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve is the interface between the central nervous system and the automated nervous system. Now, obviously the central nervous system, if for those of you who don't know, is comprised of the brain and the spinal cord. The central nervous system obviously attaches to absolutely everything. Your spine attaches to absolutely everything. Your heart, your lungs, your brain, everything that it needs so that it can regulate yourself automated, okay, automatically. Now, automated systems inside of your body like your heart beating or your lungs breathing okay some of them can be done manually when you say about breathing you then think about breathing and then you start breathing yourself however you know like valves and stuff opening inside of your heart or inside of your body in terms of digestion and stuff all of that is done automatically you can't then control that so the vagus nerve splits into two different main branches the dorsal which is everything below the diaphragm in terms of like the kidneys liver gallbladder things like that and the ventral which is everything above the diaphragm like the heart and the lungs so your automated nervous system is broke down into two main things, your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. So your sympathetic nervous system is to do with all of your emergency procedures like your body regulation in terms of danger. So it releases adrenaline and noradrenaline to prepare you for fight or flight. And then the PNS, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, brings your body back into homeostasis. So it brings the body back down to your rest and digest systems and allows you to come back to being normal running like a normal machine. Trauma experiences actually that can damage the nervous system, the, the entirety of the nervous system. How it be, and that's primarily because the trauma is received through one of our five senses, either touch, taste, hearing, smell, or eyesight, all of which are connected to the nervous system. Now, depending on the type of trauma or the way that the trauma is received, you then go into a state of fight or flight, depending on the age of the trauma as well, which is a whole different topic where trauma received in the ages between 0 and 10 is very differently received to our brain than trauma received from 10 to 20, for example, and the same from 20 to 30. You know, the more our brain has time to build, the more that our brain is fully grown, fully adapted, fully cemented in its ways, then trauma is received very, very differently. This is where different um, conditions like CPTSD or PTSD and even bipolar and DID, all of these different mental health conditions are caused by traumatic experiences in different areas of our life through different reasons and different rhymes and all these different things. So I've said a lot about trauma being like trapped inside the body and stored inside of our body and there's massive things out there. There's books you can read called The, the Body Keeps a Score and The Body Remembers and those different things and there's Louise Hay talks about how trauma is then stored in the body and how it comes out physically. Now this obviously isn't a very scientific way of putting it. However, the symptoms of traumatic stress has been very heavily documented in science and how, they can, how that can then come out in physical ailments throughout the body, like cancers or like physical pain, different things like that. The manifestation of your physical issues is very heavily documented in science. Now, this is all done on a subconscious level. Uh, we don't have any control over this. Again, like your automated nervous system, this is something that just happens without our say so. This is just something that the trauma is stored in a specific place of the subconscious because our brain has the capacity of remembering every single experience, every single memory 
that we ever go through. We just don't have the ability to actually retain that information on a conscious level. So with that idea in mind, every single smell, every single thing we touch has the, our brain has the capacity of storing that information. And then we get triggered by something that happens in our everyday life, like a smell or a taste or a touch. Again, something we receive through our five senses so that then we fall back into that area of what happened at that time, whether it's a good memory or a bad memory or a traumatic memory, which then subsequently triggers a different response in our automated nervous system in terms of fight or flight. And then will then trigger something that then can happen physically. Obviously, like I've said before, if we have a constant dump of adrenaline or noradrenaline all the time through different triggers and different stresses, that consistent, like any drug abuse, is going to then manifest physically in terms of physical ailments or physical issues, different cancers, different like that, different things that we can then we then look at being a physical issue when actually it is caused by a mental health problem and it needs to be dealt with mentally. So that, everything I've just said, is basically experiencing long-term trauma because you're constantly being triggered and putting, being put back in the space of where you once were when you experienced that trauma. Trauma itself is usually quite a short experience and obviously I know that that is not a glorifying um, umbrella statement, you do have traumatic experiences that last a long period of time. However, the generalization, most trauma happens quite quickly. However, long-term trauma is expressed in the evaluation of being consistently triggered and brought back to that space of what happened when you went through the traumatic experience in the first place. Long-term trauma exposes the nervous system to ex excessive stress all the time, which if you expose the physical thing, which is the nervous system, to excessive stress, again, through hormones, noradrenaline, adrenaline, the stress hormone, these will physiologically damage the nervous system. And th what this can do is it can impact future responses to different stresses. So after experiencing a traumatic event or after experiencing a, even a trigger of a traumatic event, the body is more alert and is more prepared for obviously fight or flight, freeze or flop, and prepares the body to then be on search and alert for danger so that it can be prepared for what's going to happen next in case of another traumatic experience. So obviously because of this, people are then more likely to engage in a defensive behavior because their fight or flight systems, freeze or flop systems have been engaged through no fault of their own. And so then they're more pr prepared to fight back. And this then has an effect on immobilization and mobilization, which are two defense mechanisms by the body. Now, obviously, if you don't have any systems in place, you don't have any tools or techniques or grounding or emotional work in place, then the body finds it very hard to return to a state of homeostasis and actually return back down to a pre triggered state. Now this is where obviously the whole systems comes into place and this is where the whole thing comes into place of being able to regulate your hormones, being able to bring your adrenaline and noradrenaline back down, bring your heart rate back down, ground yourself with your emotional work and be able to then subsequently get on with your life and do what you need to do in a pre-triggered state of before everything that was happening. So the polyvagal theory has three primary stages. So you have your rest and digest, you have your fight or flight, and then you have your shutdown. Shutdown then consists of mobilization, immobilization, freeze and flop. So with these three primary stages, when you go into a shutdown, fight or flight situation is polyvagal exercises, how to regulate your polyvagal system so that you are actually in control of yourself, control of your emotions and control of your obviously automated systems. So obviously we cannot control, if we get triggered for example, we cannot control our body's automated defense mechanisms and defense modes to prepare us, fight or flight, freeze, shut down, flop, whatever it is in that situation to then deal with that situation. However, what we then have the opportunity to do is use the polyvagal exercises to bring ourselves back down to homeostasis to ensure that we are actually able to move on with our day rather than be in a defense mode for the rest of the day or for the rest of that period of time that we're in that situation. So obviously, as we've covered and I've covered again and again and again in multiple different videos, is that exposing the nervous system to prolonged stress hormone through 
a long period of trauma is obviously going to damage the central nervous system which then comes out in physiological issues whether it be fibromyalgia or cancer or pain of some description or anorexia or different eating disorders there's a variety of different things that have been studied by scientific specialists that have been linked to mental health conditions primarily because our, we cannot regulate our body's fight or flight mechanisms because of our damage done to our central nervous system now polyvagal exercises consist of a variation of different things including deep breathing visualization closed exhalation applying cold water to the body playful experiences, safe and sound protocol sessions, all of which have a variety of different benefits in a variety of different settings. Now, all of them are extremely detailed, but, but the essential benefits of these exercises is to regulate your different hormones in a variety of different settings. So if you're out at a pub, for example, and this has happened to me, and I know this has happened to a lot of people that I know have, that I've spoken to. So you're in a pub, right? So for me, some of the triggers, some of my biggest triggers are things like lasagna, things like leek potato soup, right? For a food, for a primary food example, I've got, I've got massive smells as well. Bleach is a big thing for me. I hate bleach, um, however. What happens is I'll be out at a meal, for example, there'll be five, six, seven people out at the meal. Someone will have lasagna or someone will have a soup, for example. And now I have smelt that, I've seen that. So I've been triggered twice, one through smell, one through eyesight, two of the five senses, and I've been triggered and sent back to the time I was being abused. Now, during this time of abuse, obviously it's very horrific for a lot of people. Now. The polyvagal exercises that I would do, for example, would be something I could do at the table in that specific moment to allow myself to regulate my hormone balance, to get out of the fight or flight situation and come back down to a homeostasis area so that I can then carry on and so I'm not then in a defensive mode for the rest of the meal. Now what happens if you're in a defensive mode for the rest of the meal and you don't regulate these hormones is that you're again going to be having a massive dump of adrenaline, noradrenaline stress onto the body for a prolonged period of time because you're going to be triggered for the entirety of the time that you see or smell that particular food which is then going to be doing more and more damage to your nervous system which is then going to cause you more and more physical issues these physical issues might not happen at the time it could be five years 20 years 25 years down the line when because you don't regulate your hormones on a regular basis you don't know how to regulate your hormones and you aren't able to bring yourself back into homeostasis mode you're only in fight or flight mode for a prolonged period of time again long periods of trauma then you're going to be causing excessive damage to yourself which then will come out in physical ailments down the road again this can happen for a variety of different things i know that when i have a long period of trauma for something if i am unable to regulate my emotions for whatever reason then i get a lot of severe pain in my hips trauma is all stored in the hips i get a lot of issue in my right hip which is from my motorcycle accident obviously hand in hand they go in that area and i get a lot of issues there now then i have to deal with those physical pains because i've not been able to deal with the emotional pain that i've been going through for example there are hundreds of examples. There are a variety of different things you can do. Please have a really good read. Try these things out. All of the things, all of the different polyvagal exercise techniques that we've gone through in the video. Please take your time and have a good look and try these different things out. And that is what your task is for this week, is to actually be able to regulate your hormones as much as possible, try to. It's very hard, it takes a very long time to be able to regulate them. It's taken me multiple years to be able to do so. And even now, I'm no expert at it. I still get triggered a lot. I still go through those emotional stages and I still struggle with a lot of things. And some of those things I'm unable to bring myself back down into homeostasis mode. But we all try our best. We all do what we can when we can. And so that is the, this week's task. Hopefully you're building up a good amount of tools and techniques now by week three to be able to try these different things. So hopefully that is giving you a lot of insights. Oh, it's coming, sneeze. Obviously if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to drop me a DM. Comment your thoughts down below of some of the tools and techniques that you've tried, some of the things that do and don't work for you. Make sure you share this with someone that might actually be able to benefit them. And please like and subscribe and follow along for the journey for the next one. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic day and I shall catch you in the next one.